So they're accusing the U.S. of hypocrisy, Chinese officials and state media using the violence in the United States, trying to slam Washington and draw parallels to Hong Kong's anti-government demonstrations. Christian Whiten with us now, former State Department official, to talk about that. This was through, Christian, a number of channels, some official, others, you know, either state media, social media, whatever the case may be. But the message was the same, pretty much, the Chinese saying, hey, you're doing what you or were critical of us for doing. You're a bunch of hypocrites. Your reaction? Yeah, it's been completely over the top. You have Xinhua, which is a state media organ, uh, basically echoing the New York Times, in fact, tweeting a New York Times article that uh, was lionizing the looters, the rioters. You had Global Times come out and, and have a picture of, of police and pose the question, these are U.S. police, and say, are these peacekeepers or mass murderers? It's really over the top. And you have the uh, spokeswoman for the Chinese uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs basically mocking the State Department spokeswoman uh, for her previous sort of words of support for peaceful protest in Hong Kong. You know, this is, of course, completely duplicitous. The deal and the reason Americans really don't like violent protesters is because we have democracy here. If you don't like what people are doing who are in charge, you can fire them. That's not something you can do in Hong Kong. In fact, what little power they have is being taken away. So really over-the-top, outrageous statements from China uh, basically choosing to go on the offense rather than purely playing defense. All of that, if you're the administration, whether it's the State Department or the president directly, do you have to be careful about how you phrase things? President Trump's conference call with governors is an example leaked today, and the, the language was quite aggressive, says most of you are weak, he told them, and he urged them to dominate uh, the protesters. So how is talk like that different than what people either you know, feared or were critical of in terms of China's handling of Hong Kong when the protest movement was and continues to happen there? Right. I think it's important not to approach this with any sort of um, uh, view of moral equivalence between our conduct and the Chinese uh, government's conduct. You know, what's happening in the U.S. streets is you have people who are taking advantage of what started as nonviolent protests and are who are out looting and stealing things and terrorizing uh, people. And that's very different than what we've seen in, in China and Hong Kong, where the Chinese have broken an explicit treaty that they signed with the Brits. It was enrolled in the United Nations. It's an international national treaty that calls mm -hmm. into question their commitment to other treaties, including the phase one trade agreement that, you know, the ink on that is barely dry, signed in January. And today they said, ah, they're going to break that. They're going to stop buying soybeans and pork and other goods that yep. were a requirement of that uh, agreement. So just a lot of duplicity on their part. I think what the administration should do is what it seems to have an unofficial policy. I think it's a good policy, a policy of truth. For too many years, we've been sort of playing make-believe about Chinese intentions, and we're finally being clear about them. I'm glad you brought up live pictures, by the way, coming in of the protests in Philadelphia from WTXF, so we'll continue to monitor that. I'm glad you brought up what the Chinese did on, on farm products. Just as a quick final comment, Christian, because that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of all of this. Where are we, you think, with this trade agreement? Um, it, it, might it be in trouble? The Chinese now looks like they'll stop buying soybeans for the time being, and we'll have to watch it. What do you think is going to happen? I think, you know, before I thought this thing might be dead after the election, but President Trump wouldn't want to uh, stir the water too much before then. I think after today's announcement, the deal is on life support. Um, and frankly, the president no longer has an incentive to wait. It's sort of like when you have a down quarter in a corporation and you get out all your dirty laundry assets that may have been valued a little high. You'll write them down because you don't mind the hit to net income if you're going to have a down quarter. That's where we are with the economy. And the quarter of a point, the eighth of a point we might lose because of ending this uh, trade deal and maybe begin to decouple. It's just, you know, there's no longer a disincentive to do that. All right. Um, again, we'll have to keep watching all of that. And Christian White, it's always good to see you. Thanks uh, for the analysis on Thanks, China, Melissa. Melissa.